the VTC meeting of the Security Council is called to order. The provisional agenda for this meeting is press international peace and security. The agenda is adopted. In accordance with Rule 37 of the Council's provisional rules of procedure, I invite the representative of Iraq to participate in this meeting. It is so decided. In accordance with Rule 39 of the Council Provisional Rules of Procedure, I invite Mr. Karim Assad Ahmed Khan, Special Advisor of the Investigative Team established pursuant to Civil Council Resolution 2379 of 2017, to participate in this meeting. It is so decided. The Security Council will now begin its consideration of item two of the agenda. I wish to draw the attention of the council members to document S slash 2020 slash 1107, a letter dated 11 of November 2020 from the special advisor and head of United Nations investigative team to promote accountability for crimes committed by Daesh stroke Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant addressed to the place of Security Council. I now give the floor to Mr. Karim Assad Ahmed Khan. You have the floor, sir. Um, thank you so much. Mr. President, <clears throat> distinguished delegates, I'm honored to be able to address you this afternoon to present this fifth report on the activities of the United Nations investigative team to promote accountability for the crimes committed by Daesh, the so-called Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant. Today, in fact, marks three years since the government of Iraq was able to proclaim that the sacrifices and the courage of the Iraqi people had prevailed and that all territories in their country had been liberated from the shadow of Daesh. And it's only appropriate that I begin today by recognizing the continued strength and resilience of all communities in Iraq, which have been and remain so critical, both in delivering that victory and in taking the subsequent steps together with our team to deliver justice for the victims and survivors of Daesh crimes. Mr. President, uh, distinguished delegates, Last month, I was able to again personally witness the strength and the courage of these different communities, standing side by side with these families of victims at the awfully but aptly named Grave of the Mothers. That grave is in Sola, in the north of Iraq, in Sinjar. That grave serves as an awful and sober reminder of the depths of horror, of horror that were inflicted by Daesh upon innocent communities. That grave contained the remains of teenage children and women executed after having been determined by Daesh to be past child-bearing age. In speaking with the sons and the daughters and the relatives and the loved ones, whose remains lay in, laid in that grave. I was struck, as I have been so many times in my engagement with impacted communities in Iraq, by the painfully present legacy of trauma that ISIL has left in its wake. It is tangible, and it remains today. Our work at these sites and the presence of those who have lost their family members at the hands of ISIL underlines very clearly both the continued urgency of our work and the need to ensure that our work is conducted in a manner sensitive to the experiences of those that we seek to serve. The psychosocial support provided on, type, on site by UNITAD experts and the holding of religious Yazidi ceremonies upon the commencement of the excavations reflect our attempt to ensure that those who have suffered from the crimes of Daesh receive the bare minimum 
the compassion, the understanding that they need as we work with them, with the council, with the government of Iraq to hold the perpetrators to account. It is my personal commitment that as we continue our excavations in Zagorotia, Ambar and Mosul early next year, our team will ensure that this work and indeed all of the investigative activities are guided by this critically important trauma-informed approach. Mr. President, distinguished delegates, the recommencement of mass grave excavations one month ago provides an example of the way in which the team has developed innovative solutions and drawn upon its partnerships with survivors, with the Iraqi national counterparts, and with other actors in order to confront the unprecedented challenges posed by, uh, posed by COVID that are experienced by everybody in the world over the last six months. New approaches have been required across every aspect of our work. The collection of testimonial evidence has continued following the development of new protocols, which have facilitated the conduct of remote interviews. We've developed a new online portal, allowing for the submission of evidence directly to the team in a way that provides a secure, a safe, and a user-friendly platform through which we've been able to empower members of different communities in Iraq, in Australia, in Germany to come forward with their accounts. I think that's quite a step change and an important innovation. Through collaboration with the Iraqi security services, we've been able to develop enhanced procedures for the movement of investigators in Iraq, ensuring that the most high priority field investigations can continue in full compliance with COVID-19 travel restrictions. We've been completely complying, of course, with the Iraqi uh, procedures and rules at this uh, difficult moment. In parallel to this, we have partnered with leading technology companies in order to bring cutting edge analytical tools to our work. Significantly, this is reducing the time needed for large scale data processing, particularly important with the crimes of Daesh and the massive data sets that have been left in their wake, collected by way of battlefield evidence collect, uh, collected by the government of Iraq and by other partners. Through a recent initiative with the Microsoft Corporation, the team has strengthened its ability to utilize cognitive services, utilizing facial recognition, uh, facial detection, machine translation, automatic detection and labeling of videos with graphic content. And drawing on, on these innovations, I can confirm to the council that progress has continued in our key lines of investigation. As reflected in my report, the continued momentum generated allows us now to envisage finalization of the first thematic case briefs in the first half of next year. These will address our investigations into crimes committed against the Yazidi community in Xinjiang and also the massacre of uh, unarmed air cadets and other personnel in Tikrit Air Academy. And in parallel with that, the team has continued to expand its lines of investigation with six dedicated field investigation units, now in place, including three new units that have been established in significant part due to the generous financial contributions by the United States of America and the United Kingdom. And as a result, investigations in relation to crimes committed against the Christian community, the Kakai, the Shabak, Sunni, Turkmen, and the Shia communities is progressing rapidly. This diversification represents a realization of an undertaking that I gave to this council at the very outset of my work, that we will ensure that there is no hierarchy of victim in our approach to the implement, implementation of this mandate. Every human life matters, regardless of religion, tribe, ethnicity, every life stolen, robbed, mutilated by Daesh was precious. And this investigative team is focused on ensuring those crimes are properly investigated. It's self-evident that all communities in Iraq suffered at the hands of ISIL. 
and every effort must be made to include them in our investigations to hold Daesh to account. Faced with this unprecedented challenge by COVID-19, we've also further strengthened our cooperation with the Iraqi authorities and those also in the Kurdistan region. And I would, uh, it would be remiss of me not to take the opportunity to express my sincere thanks to the National Coordinating Committee of the Government of Iraq for the excellent support they have provided during this extraordinary period. And that cooperation from Baghdad has also been replicated from the cooperation and assistance from the KRG. As far as Baghdad is concerned, we have recently met with the government and the National Coordinating Committee and reached out to the International Committee of Missing Persons and established a joint national mass graves uh, excavation strategy. But for the first time, this strategy provides a unified, coherent framework, guiding the action relating to all Daesh activity, all Daesh mass graves in Iraq. And these excavations are now aligned with the criminal investigative priorities of UNITAD. And the team is um, being supported and supporting the government of Iraq in the deployment of advanced technological tools and evidence collected uh, practices to ensure that sites are addressed, opened up and evidence collected in accordance with international standards. The utmost priority is also being given to ensuring the prompt return of the remains to the families of victims. And this has now been confirmed to take place on the 31st of January of next year. Uh, that will be a very somber occasion, of course. This will be the first bodies that have been identified in, uh, in Kojo, in Sinjar. Uh, they will be returned, God willing, um, to burial in accordance with the EZD religious and cultural practices. A, a major evidence digitization project is now underway, uh, aimed uh, at making a vast, the vast documentary archives held by Iraq fully accessible for use by us for the first time. Over 18 Iraqi authorities, 18, have now engaged in this project, completing initial evidence assessment surveys and confirming various challenges that they have in terms of evidence collection, storage, and processing. This initial work has underlined the significant scale of the evidentiary material that will ultimately be collected, stored, and made available in criminal trials by dint of this initiative. Through our reach, recent engagement with one counterterrorism court in northern Iraq, just one, the team has identified tens of thousands of pieces of evidentiary material, including a wide range of ISIL internal records of potential relevance to ongoing cases against identified perpetrators. Your Excellency, during my recent meeting with His Excellency, the Prime Minister of Iraq, we recognized that it is through this unified approach that we can come together. We can ensure that the evidence of ISIL crimes in Iraq is fully utilized in domestic trials to hold those responsible to account. This collaborative approach has also been reflected in my recent meetings with the President and the Prime Minister uh, of the Kurdish regional government, and I'm grateful for their continued support. As reflected in the report, this commitment to delivering meaningful accountability for ISIL crimes has extended to recent action taken by Iraqi authorities with respect to a legal basis for prosecution of ISIL members in Iraq. And I've been very encouraged in recent months by the efforts made by the Council of Representatives to take forward legislation that would allow these Daesh members, based upon evidence, to be prosecuted for the international crimes of genocide, crimes against humanity, and war crimes. If this bill is passed, it would mark a significant step forward in responding to the constant, indefatigable calls of survivors that the prosecutions must reflect the true nature 
and gravity of the crimes inflicted upon them by ISIL. And I'm further encouraged that such legislation contemplates a modality through which UNITAD may support such prosecutions in a manner consistent with our terms of reference. This initiative should hopefully be welcomed by all member states seeking to promote accountability for ISIL crimes. Uh, Mr. President, distinguished delegates, in the last six months, our cooperation with the Iraqi judiciary has entered a new phase. Agreements have been reached on a new project through which the team will provide training and support for the Iraqi authorities, building case files for the prosecution of ISIL members in Iraq. Prosecution for genocide, crimes against humanity and war crimes. So this work is taking place in advance of the law being enacted so that if a law is enacted, there will not be a further uh, lag before accountability can take place. And I'm pleased to note that uh, already initial case files have been identified with the Iraqi judiciary in relation to crimes of sexual slavery committed by ISIL and also in relation to a high member of ISIL that is presently in Iraqi detention. I wish to emphasize that this arrangement for the provision of meaningful support by UNITAD to Iraqi investigative judges represents, in my view, an important moment in the implementation of our mandate. Allied with potential adoption of legislation in Iraq allowing for the prosecution of international crimes, we can perhaps for the first time begin to see a clear path towards the fulfillment of the promise made by this council to survivors and impacted communities three years or so ago in resolution 2379. I have reflected previously to this council that commitment is not made good solely through the collection and the preservation of evidence important though that is. Our commitment, our collective responsibility will only be satisfied when this evidence is presented in court and survivors of ISIL crimes are able to see their abusers held accountable in fair trials in accordance with the rule of law. To this end, I can confirm to the Council I have continued to engage with the government of Iraq with a view to establishing modalities for the sharing of evidence with competent Iraqi authorities in accordance with the terms of reference. And in parallel, we have also reinforced our engagement with national authorities in other jurisdictions through which the provision of support in ongoing domestic proceedings can be made. In the last six months, this spirit of partnership in the face of adversity has also extended to our engagement in other parts of Iraqi society. It's been difficult for everybody. Our cooperation with non-governmental organizations in particular have been strengthened through the establishment and initial meetings of a UNITAD NGO dialogue forum. We had our first meeting in June, uh, other meetings in October, uh, thematic roundtables and our first plenary uh, in December. The creation of this platform represents the fulfillment of a priority I set at the outset to ensure that all parts of Iraqi society, and in particular NGOs connected to communities in Iraq, representative of people of Iraq, benefit from a dedicated space in which they can openly engage with our team. But these entities have already served as crucial partners to the implementation of our mandate through their role in facilitating engagement with impacted communities by supporting and empowering survivors come forward to us with their accounts. I'm delighted that we now have a forum in which we can benefit from the expertise and unique perspective of these organizations. Some of them, in fact, have very uh, special skills, particularly uh, psychosocial skills that we're trying to harness to make sure that the investigations are conducted in the best possible way and really safeguarding the interests, the dignity um, and well-being of those that we interact with. In addition to our partnerships with Iraqi civil society, 
I continue to be profoundly appreciative to the religious leadership of Iraq for their constant and unswerving support for this mandate. In July, building on the adoption of the landmark interfaith statement on the survivors and victims of ISIL earlier this year, I was delighted to host a meeting jointly with His Excellency Adama Dieng, uh, then the um, uh, Special Advisor of the Office of uh, Genocide Prevention and Responsibility to Protect. And this was held in conjunction with the internationally well-known organization Religions for Peace. And at this, in addition to a whole panoply of different religious leaders across the world, uh, I was delighted to see that the leaders of the Shia, Sunni, Yazidi, Christian, and Kakai faiths were all present. As reflected in the interfaith statement itself, this collective support of faith leaders across Iraq for our work represents a crucial repudiation of any claim at all of Daesh to spiritual legitimacy. It's been repudiated collectively. It is by divorcing their criminal actions from any religious basis or any justification that we can inoculate future uh, generations in Iraq and globally from attempts to radicalize the most vulnerable members of society. In this spirit, I'm delighted that the government of Iraq have invited and His Holiness, the Pontiff Pope Francis, will visit Iraq uh, next year. Mr. President, distinguished delegates, two years on, two years on from the arrival of the team to Baghdad, the progress made in our investigative work, allied with the crucial partnerships we have developed with our Iraqi counterparts, allows us to begin to consider what the ultimate fulfillment of our mandate will look like. As reflected in my report, with a view to establishing a comprehensive framework for the next steps of our work, we have enhanced our investiga uh, investigation strategy to ensure the effective delivery of its three mutually supportive pillars. Through the production of thematic case briefs outlining the constituent elements of crime substantiated by our investigations, by the finalization of individual case files, tying, uh, tying Daesh members to particular crimes uh, with all the evidence that domestic courts will need, and thirdly, by the provision of targeted support to ongoing proceedings. I believe that in the coming year, we will significantly strengthen the basis upon which Iraqi authorities and those of other states can take forward domestic proceedings in relation to members of Daesh most responsible for their crimes. Whilst the challenges of the last six months have been unprecedented, the team therefore looks forward to the coming year with renewed hope that the legitimate demands of justice of survivors will be met. The unique partnerships underpinning this mandate that of independent investigations, close co uh, collaboration with Iraqi authorities of international standards adapted to domestic context is working. As always, I'm extremely grateful for the support of the SRSG and the support of UNIMI. But this innovative model for criminal accountability developed by the council three years ago now provides an opportunity to investigate and start a paradigm shift in the investigation and prosecution of Daesh crimes. In seeking to support this moment, the team will continue to rely upon your, your unanimous support. Thank you so much. I thank Mr. I thank Khan, Khan for, his him, for his and Mowbray briefing. And I'll give the floor to those members of Sufi Council who wish to make their statement. I give the floor to the representative of the United Kingdom. Thank you, Mr. President. First, I'd like to welcome Special Advisor Kareem Khan's report on the continued progress made by the UN investigative team for the accountability of Daesh in recent months and the first report since the team's mandate was extended for a year in September 2020. To underline that this is extremely important work and we continue to support the efforts to ensure accountability for Daesh victims. The United Kingdom notes UNITAD's flexibility in implementing their mandate while responding to the challenges posed by COVID-19 
and particularly to limitations on field-based investigative activities. The fact that six dedicated investigation units are now in place is to be commended. And we welcome the work and the addition of thematic units, particularly in the area of gender-based crimes. The United Kingdom will continue to support the investigative team to ensure that the team is able to fulfill its mandate. This is why the UK has provided assistance to minority-focused investigations, as well as supporting the development of Shahud, a digital platform allowing witnesses and survivors to submit information remotely, securely and confidentially in relation to Daesh crimes. We welcome contributions from other countries. Daesh accountability should be a truly international effort, just as the global coalition to defeat Daesh was. The United Kingdom is seized of the enormity of the task ahead to find a solution that enables UNITAD's evidence to be used effectively to bring those responsible to account in Iraq. We welcome progress on draft legislation to provide the domestic legal basis for the prosecution of Daesh members for international crimes in Iraq. But we urge close collaboration between the team, the government of Iraq and the Kurdistan regional government to agree a way forward and secure an evidence sharing mechanism that provides assurances on the use of the death penalty. And we welcome continued collaboration with the Iraqi judicial authorities. Justice also means assisting the victims of Daesh to rebuild their lives. We welcome the team's expanded capacities for assisting with witness protection and support including psychosocial care and gender-attuned services for survivors and family members. Regular updates to the UN Security Council, Mr. President, are key in allowing us to see the progress the team is making. The team must seek to engage both with us at the United Nations and with individual member states who are providing staffing, funding and support. The United Kingdom continues to support the work of the UN investigative team. This is why we have contributed £2 million and continuing to engage in New York, London, Baghdad, and Erbil. The work undertaken by the team is unique. We must ensure it continues to provide a sustainable and internationally supported mechanism in the future. The United Kingdom continues, welcomes continued support for the team from Security Council members through funding, staffing, and engagement to demonstrate Security Council commitment and ensure evidence is gathered to hold Daesh to account. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the Minister of the United Kingdom for her statement. I now give the floor to the Minister of China. Mr. President, China thanks Special Advisor Mr. Karim Khan for his briefing. Since the new government was sworn in in May this year, Iraq has made positive progress in moving forward its domestic political processes, tackling economic and social challenges, and developing peaceful and friendly foreign relations, among others. At the same time, terrorism remains a threat to peace and stability in Iraq. The international community should continue to support Iraq in combating terrorism to bring the terrorists to justice and consolidate the hard-won achievements in countering terrorism. The work of UNITAD should be conducive to achieving this goal. China takes note of the fifth work report submitted by UNITAD and appreciates UNITAD's active mandate implementation despite challenges posed by COVID-19. The support of the Iraqi government and the trust of the Iraqi people are essential to the work of UNITAD. We hope that UNITAD will maintain its independence and impartiality and fulfill its duties in strict accordance with its mandate. According to Council Resolution 2379, Iraq is the main recipient of the collected evidence, and therefore UNITAD should hand over the evidence to Iraq in a timely and complete manner. Prior consent of Iraq should be obtained before information can be shared with other member states, and the principles of transparency and non-discrimination should be followed. The international community should genuinely respect Iraq's sovereignty and jurisdiction over crimes committed on Iraqi soil, and support Iraq in bringing the terrorists to justice in accordance with domestic laws. We welcome Iraq's legislative efforts aiming at promoting accountability of former ISIL terrorists, and we hope that these efforts will produce results as early as possible. 
The parties concerned and UN should also support Iraq in addressing the issue of FTFs in Iraq. The Secretariat should closely monitor the developments and effectively gather information, while the member states concerned should shoulder their respective responsibilities. Mr. President, terrorism is the common enemy of mankind. Combating terrorism knows no borders. All countries must uphold multilateralism, strengthen international cooperation, fight against terrorism in all its forms and manifestations, and resolutely crack down on all terrorist groups designated by the Council. I must not practice double stand. Double
of inquiry into crime committed by ISOs. A turning point is the provision of support by UNITAT to Iraqi authorities to implement witnesses' protection measures in accordance with the terms of reference. The significant progress in the support for Iraq in handling outstanding issues related to ISO crimes are very commendable. We are also welcome the Iraqi government strengthened cooperation with UNITAT we have facilitated the implementation of the team mandate in key areas. We note with satisfaction that the team have gained wide support from not only central, regional, and local authorities, but also religious community leaders. The agreement between UNITAT and the Supreme Judicial Council of Iraq to assist Iraqi investigative judges in the development of key case file for the, for the prosecutions of ISO's members for the war crimes, crimes against humanity and genocide is very significant development. This enhanced cooperation has, demonstra has demonstrated domestic efforts to hold perpetrators accountable for their crimes. However, the work ahead of the investigation, investigative team remains challenging. To make further advancement and fulfill its mandate, the mission would, should focus on its strategic priority. It needs to strengthen cooperation with not only the key authorities, but also religious leaders, local community people, survivors, witnesses, and families of victims. We encourage the team to apply all the procedures and methods of protection so as to ensure that victims, witnesses, and all other persons who cooperate with the team can do so in safety and security. To conclude, we welcome the support of member states to the investigative teams through the provision of expert and financial contributions. We also call upon the international communities to strengthen their support for UNITAT in the implementation of its mandate in accordance with international laws, relevant resolution of security councils, and the purpose and principles of the Charter of the United Nations including respect for the sovereignty, territorial integrity, independence, and unities of Iraq. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Vietnam for her statement. I now give the floor to the representative of uh, France. Bonjour, Monsieur le Président. Good morning, good afternoon, President, and thank you very much. I should like at the outset to thank the Special Advisor, Mr. Karin Khan, for his briefing and commend the work done over recent months against a difficult backdrop. I also welcome the presence of the Iraqi Ambassador. This is a sign that the international community and Iraq are working hand in hand, in hand to combat impunity in response to Iraq's call to this council. I should like at the outset to speak about the progress made by the team over recent months. The investigative team, as we can see, is fully able to accomplish the mission. Its mission, uh, confined to it by the Council in Resolution 2379, to collect, conserve and store evidentiary material in Iraq of crimes which may constitute war crimes, crimes against humanity and crimes of genocide perpetrated by Daesh in Iraq. As was said by the special advisor, despite the difficult context for the team due to the health crisis, the interviews with witnesses and survivors continued via video conference and thank to digital technology. Secure tools were developed, such as the platform allowing witnesses and survivors to submit information remotely, which is very positive. The continued digitization of evidentiary material is also crucial. Finally, it is important that the excavation of mass graves, particularly on the two sites mentioned, is able to continue after the suspension of activities at the beginning of the year due to COVID-19. Analytical work done on these mass graves is essential to shed light on the facts. And we hope to establish criminal responsibility before the Iraqi or third country jurisdictions. France will continue to support this work to allow the victims to obtain justice and to be protected. 
Secondly, another essential point which we welcome is the good cooperation between the investigative team and the Iraqi authorities, particularly the Iraqi judicial authorities. The dialogue underway with the Iraqi authorities is very positive and will, we hope, allow for a consolidation of the team's database. The progress made in domestic legislation to allow for prosecution of Daesh suspects for international crimes is essential, and this attests to the commitment of the Iraqi authorities. The eventual goal is to use evidentiary material in the proceedings involving members of Daesh in compliance with the UN's principles and best practices. In this regard, it's important to recall the unchanging position of the United Nations of not transmitting material during judicial proceedings where there is a possibility of the death penalty being imposed wherever this may be. Cooperation is also crucial with the relevant UN mechanisms, particularly the United Nations Assistance Mission in Iraq which has an important and broad mandate in terms of strengthening the rule of law and protecting human rights. Finally, to conclude, I wish to recall that France remains fully committed alongside the Iraqi people in combating Daesh in all its dimensions, including within the international coalition against Daesh. Combating impunity for all perpetrators of crimes must be fully integrated into the stabilization, reconstruction and reconciliation efforts of all components of Iraqi society. This is key to preventing any Daesh resurgence. The creation of the UNITAD NGO Dialogue Forum, which allows all communities to be involved, will be essential. This council must remain mobilized to prevent any resurgence of Daesh in any of its forms by continuing its support to the efforts undertaken by the Iraqi authorities to meet these challenges and help UNITAD to work in the long term. I thank you, President. I thank the representative of France for her statement. I now give the floor to the representative of the Dominican Republic. Gracias, señor Presidente. Thank you, Mr. President. We'd like to thank Mr. Khan for his detailed report and his professionalism in leading the work of the investigative team. And we reiterate our firm support for his mandate pursuant to Resolution 2379. I take this opportunity to wish him every success in his forthcoming projects. At the outset, we welcome the significant progress made to date and the resourceful way in which the team has adapted its investigation work in light of the restrictions in force and the disruptions to its work as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. We greatly value its efforts in this demanding work. We recognize the harmonious working relations that the team has maintained with Iraqi authorities, the region of Kurdistan and local communities, which has been key to reach the current results. In this sense, we welcome the agreement between the investigative team and the Judicial Council in Iraq to grant technical assistance and training to investigative judges to facilitate domestic judicial proceedings. We hope that this spirit of collaboration will persist and be constantly enhanced. We further underscore the firm commitment of the Iraqi government to combat terrorism and facilitate proceedings in order to guarantee accountability for war crimes, crimes against humanity and genocide perpetrated by the Islamic State in Iraq, as well as the willingness demonstrated by other states to carry out prosecutions, particularly European states. Accordingly, we welcome the progress made with regard to the draft legislation that would establish a legal basis that would enable the prosecution of members of Islamic State for international crimes, which is an important step towards accountability. We hope that in turn, the needs and concerns of victims will be addressed. This through an exhaustive process of consultations with the various communities of survivors, since it is our view that we cannot overlook their participation in judicial proceedings. Turning now to initial priorities, Sinya, Musul and Tikrit, we welcome the progress made in excavations, the collection of evidence as well as the approaches made by the team towards the various communities of survivors and their religious representatives. 
We further encourage the team to continue this work with full respect for the norms, customs and religious practices. We are equally pleased by developments made in areas that represent the new priorities, including the strategy of granting greater attention to cases of sexual and gender-based violence and crimes against children perpetrated against Christian communities. We wish to underscore the technical and financial cooperation, as well as new tools provided by some states and organizations in order to channel and expand these new investigative units. Moreover, we underscore the active collaboration that the Gender-Based Crimes and Crimes Against Children unit has had with victims. This has led to the identification of alleged perpetrators of these crimes, and we note these as important steps in the investigations. Along the same lines, we deem the development of a digital platform that will allow victims and witnesses to provide information and document relating to crimes while guaranteeing their protection of their identity as an excellent initiative. Mr. President, to conclude, in the short time since UNITAD's establishment and since it began investigations, we recognise that immense efforts have been made which have led to significant progress being made in achieving its mandate. These common efforts must not be lessened so that we can guarantee that the crimes of the Islamic State do not go unpunished, thus heeding the call for justice from survivors, the relatives of the victims, and the call of an entire people to live in peace. Thank you. I want to thank the representatives of the public for a statement. And I give the floor to the representative of the United States. Thank you, Mr. President. Special Representative Khan, thank you so much for your extensive briefing on this difficult topic. The United States is committed to supporting the critical work of UNITAD to collect, store, and preserve evidence of ISIS atrocities that may amount to war crimes, crimes against humanity, and genocide. We urge the Iraqi government to recommit to fair, evidence-based trials that allow the victims and survivors of ISIS brutality and false ideology to have their day in court. These evidence-based trials will not only establish the clear culpability of ISIS and its members for the perpetration of the atrocities, they will help showcase Iraq's justice system and its commitment to the rule of law. We're encouraged to hear that the Iraqi parliament is considering legislation that will allow Iraq to prosecute ISIS suspects for international crimes, and we support such efforts. It is imperative that these heinous crimes be labeled for exactly what they are, genocide and crimes against humanity, so that no one can ever doubt what took place, but also to reflect what the Iraqi people have overcome. We also support UNITAD's expanded cooperation with the government of Iraq, including with the Iraqi judiciary. We are confident this increased cooperation will contribute to additional successful prosecutions of ISIS members in Iraq and abroad, and that the partnership of the government of Iraq and the Kurdistan regional government with UNITAD will help ensure positive outcomes for Iraq and the victims of these awful crimes. We know that COVID-19 has further complicated this critical work, worsening already difficult conditions. But despite these obstacles, Iraq's Mass Graves Directorate and the Medico Legal Directorate, in cooperation with UNITAD, continue to build the capacity of the national Iraqi forensic teams to conduct evidence-based investigations and exhumations. This was evidenced in late October when Iraqi authorities resumed the exhumations of mass graves left by ISIS in Sola, known as the Grave of Mothers, where dozens of elderly Yazidi women were executed by ISIS because they were deemed too old to be sold into sexual slavery. In this case, and in so many others like it, we must never forget the brutality that ISIS inflicted on their victims. We recognize and applaud the government of Iraq for its plans to exhume all mass graves and to remember and honor all of those victimized by ISIS brutality. The United States also recognizes that while the evidence-based trials are absolutely critical to justice and to the healing process, so is support for victims and survivors. This includes psychosocial support, as well as the realization of victims' rights through legal proceedings. Exhumations are a painful process, and they can trigger difficult emotions, including sadness, anxiety, anger, loneliness, and fear. 
We commend UNITAD and its partners for providing psychosocial support to staff, survivors, and family members. We also commend the Iraqi government and the Kurdish regional government for their continuing support of these goals. In recognition of this critical work, the United States continues its financial support to UNITAD. As we noted in our last meeting on UNITAD, the United States provided two million US dollars in support of UNITAD's first, first exhumations of mass grave sites in Iraq in the Sinjar region. As of December 2020, US funding for UNITAD now totals $8.85 million, which supports a wide range of different activities associated with UNITAD's mandates. The United States once again urges member states to repatriate, prosecute, rehabilitate, and reintegrate as appropriate their citizens and nationals who traveled to Iraq to join ISIS. Iraq should not have to continue to shoulder responsibility for these foreign terrorist fighters and associated family members alone. We note the valuable support UNITAD can provide to other member states in conducting such investigations and prosecutions. We thank the government of Iraq and UNITAD for their continuing cooperation and work to hold ISIS accountable for all its atrocities. Thank you, Mr. President. I uh, thank the representative of the United States for his statement. I now give the floor to the representative of Belgium. Uh, merci, uh, Monsieur le Président. the Security Council. Um, I would like to make three points to today. First of all, the need to deliver justice to the victims of atrocities within the framework of the reconstruction reconciliation in Iraq. The support uh, provided to by the team to national uh, proceedings in Iraq and uh, elsewhere, and uh, the support to efforts made to make sure that the UN policies and practices are abided by. First of all, we congratulate Mr. Khan on the progress um, they uh, have shown shown thanks to their interaction with all components of the Iraqi society. They have deepened and diversified the areas of investigation um, by making uh, sure that they've approached all of the communities who are victimized by Daesh, be they Christians, Sunnites, uh, women, or soon LGBTI. Furthermore, a growing number of their priority uh, cases have moved on to the stage of evidence consolidation and legal analysis. Uh, this, uh, together with the work to structure the outcomes of this investigation, will enable UNITAD to um, promote the opening of multiple criminal proceedings. And uh, this uh, mechanism of transitional uh, justice will therefore contribute towards the rebuilding and reconciliation amongst the various communities in Iraq. Fighting impunity in all of the crimes they have been committed has to become an essential component of this process. Strengthened cooperation between the Iraqi authorities and the investigative team is in this regard an, a very encouraging sign and we uh, welcome it. Second point, we note with satisfaction that the investigative team has strengthened its support to uh, national authorities in third states in uh, response to their request for assistance. This is key in two respects. First of all, uh, this is because of the many proceedings which are currently underway, in particular in Europe. And secondly, because the cooperation that results from this between the Iraqi judicial authorities and those in third countries will certainly will have to contribute in the long term to uh, opening uh, specific cases in Iraq. And this leads me to my third and my last point. Under uh, the Security Council's 23, Resolution 2377, which established the investigative team, the Iraqi authorities have to remain the first beneficiaries of uh, evidence collected by UNITAD. 
And uh, for this, uh, Mr. Khan and his team have developed various uh, uh, cooperation activities for, with Iraq. And we particularly welcome the support provided by the investigative team to legislative work aimed uh, at enabling prosecution for war crimes, crimes against humanity and genocide, and the assistance extended to Iraqi investigative ju judges so that they can put together case files which should uh, make a such prosecution possible. We also welcome the continued cooperation between the Iraqi uh, with the Iraqi authorities so as to arrive at it, uh, modalities of sharing evidence whilst following the United Nations policies and good practices, um, the U unit mandate and um, international law. This applies to procedural guarantees, protection of witnesses and victims, and the non-application of the death penalty. Beyond that, I recall the importance that we attach to making sure that perpetrators of all serious crimes be prosecuted, regardless of their affiliation. To conclude, Mr. President, I would like to underscore that my country will remain fully determined to continue to support UNITA once we are no longer on the Council. We will continue supporting the mechanism which is essential in order to deliver justice to the victims of serious crimes committed in Iraq. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of um, Belgium for a statement. I now give the floor to the representative of Yemen. Thanks very much, uh, Mr. President. I think I can be, be short because um, listening to all the interventions, I think we are all on the same line, and this is very important on this um, very also important um, subject. Let me start by commending the Special Advisor Khan and, and his team for the very important work that you are doing. Your description at the beginning of your intervention reminded us um, when you describe the mass graves, the excavation, the work that you do, that you are doing, you um, reminded us of the dimension of the horrendous crime committed by uh, ISIL. And um, um, I'd also like to, to, to say that we, uh, we appreciate the, the compassion you are demonstrating and you and your team and how you work with survivors and with their, their family members. Um, the uh, description that you gave um, reminded us that Ira what Iraq suffered, what the community suffered. Um, crimes against humanity, genocide, war crimes. And uh, Germany is um, f behind your efforts. We will continue to support you financially, politically, also by, um, by providing personnel. Um, Talking about those crimes, um, let me um, recall colleagues, um, those of you who were there last uh, April when we had our first presidency, we invited to the council Nadia Murat, um, Nobel Prize winner, who was a survivor of sexual violence committed by um, ISIL. She uh, was among 1,000 um, um, Yezidi women we invited to Germany to, um, to uh, give them a chance to heal their wounds and to, to survive. And uh, this brought also to the council um, a bit the, you know, that we were faced with the reality, what we, um, what we unfortunately, um, or what they had to encounter in Iraq. Um, again, um, perpetrators committed these horrendous crimes. They have to be held to account. We owe it to the victims, we owe it to the survivors, um, we owe it to the traumatized um, communities like the Yazidi, but also other communities. Um, and um, only if we are successful in this work, um, do we give these communities a chance to heal and, and to, to find peace. And um, I think we owe it also to all of us um, that um, by being successful, we prevent um, similar crimes to be committed in other places. So let me um, come back to what I said at the beginning. Thank you very much, um, Special Envoy Khan, for your work, for what you try to achieve with your team to use modern technology. This is very important so that you work with local authorities, um, including the Kurdish regional government, that you work with the affected communities, that with the NGOs to quote you 
in a spirit of partnership. Um, very important also that you engage in training um, of the Iraqi judiciary, um, that um, uh, they can do the job, um, which is very important, um, enable them um, also to do it. And then, of course, we need and we hope we have then the, the legislation adopted necessary. The objective um, will be that um, there will be fair and independent criminal proceedings um, consistent with the applicable international law. And uh, for Germany, this includes the prohibition of the uh, death penalty. Um, let me end by thanking also the ambassador of, um, of Iraq. Mohamed, thank you very much for the very close cooperation that um, we also heard from um, Envoy Khan, close cooperation between UNITAT and your government. This is uh, very, very important. We look forward to, um, as um, Mr. Khan, you have um, announced, the finalization of um, case briefs um, that we will see perpetrators um, that will be sentenced. Thank you very much. I thank the representative of uh, Germany for his statement. And I'll give the floor to the representative of uh, Estonia. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Estonia acknowledges the successful work done by UNITAD during the last reporting period. Despite the challenging circumstances in the political and security sphere, as well as also the COVID-19 restrictions, we remain concerned about the recent eruption of violence in Suleimania, which endangers stability in northern Iraq. Estonia welcomes the recent renewal of UNITAD's mandate for another year. We value the continued efforts of UNITAD to contribute to the outgoing accountability processes in Iraq with full respect for the principles and best practices of the United Nations. We fully support the strategic priority of UNITAD of strengthening the capacity of Iraqi authorities and commend the significant progress made by UNITAD in collaborating with the Iraqi authorities in the identification and collection of new sources of evidence. We stress the importance of the continued work of UNITAD on the issues of sexual and gender-based violence in the field of witness protection, as well as psychological support for witnesses and survivors to avoid secondary trauma through the respective UNITAD special units. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of uh, Estonia for his statement. And I'll give the floor to the representative of Tunisia. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the special advisor, Mr. Karim Khan, for his briefing. And I welcome the presence of distinguished permanent representative of Iraq, Ambassador Mohammed Bahr al -Uloum. Tunisia welcomes the renewal of UNITAD's mandate by the Security Council in September 2020 at the request of the Iraqi government, which translates the recognition by the Council of the cooperation efforts between Iraq and the investigative team, as well as our collective attachment to achieving accountability and holding all perpetrators of terrorist acts accountable for their crimes. We welcome the significant progress made by made during the reporting period, highlighted particularly through the entry of several investigative priorities into the phase of evident evidentiary consolidation and legal analysis, the identification of additional lines of inquiry, the expansion of diversification of the actors and victim communities involved, the deepening of relations with the national authorities and provision of capacity building and trainings to Iraqi officials. We recognize the impact of COVID-19 on the work of UNITADS, especially with regards to the field-based activities, and we commend the team for its efforts to find innovative ways to mitigate the impact of the imposed restrictions, including through the use of advanced technologies. Mr. President, we continue to underline that while terrorism does not spare anyone 
from its atrocities. Vulnerable groups are often objected to more violence than others. At the same time, their specific needs are not always properly taken into account in the conduct of investigations and the provision of remedies. We therefore appreciate the gender-based and survivor-centered approach undertaken by the team that gives due consideration to mental health and well-being of survivors, while re re reiterating the importance of the full collaboration with the Iraqi government and the need to ensure the respect of national ownership and priorities. In Resolution 2379 of 2017, the Security Council recognized the gravity of the crimes committed by Daesh, which amount to war crimes, crimes against humanity, and genocide. We continue in this regard to follow the discussions in Iraq around the legislative initiative aiming at establishing, establishing a legal basis for such crimes. Mr. President, Tunisia expresses particularly its deep appreciation to the government of Iraq for its constructive cooperation with the investigative team. The report highlights the contributions of Iraqi authorities in the collection of evidence related to crimes committed by high-level ISIL terrorists through the provision of witness statements, cease, cease files, audio and video recordings, and other documentary evidence. In this regard, Tunisia reaffirms Resolution 2379, in which the Security Council stipulated that the relevant Iraqi authorities are the primary intended recipient of collected evidence and that the investigative team shall operate with full respect for the sovereignty of Iraq and its jurisdiction over crimes committed in its territory. We therefore look forward to full implementation of Resolution 2379 by moving forward with the trials with the aim of serving justice for victims and survivors and ensuring accountability for those responsible for such hateful crimes. It is important that the Security Council remains united and supportive of the government and the people of Iraq in such endeavors. I thank you, and I have a question, if you permit. Tunisia commends UNITAD for its efforts to continue making progress despite the challenges posed by COVID-19 pandemic, including by har harnessing technological solutions. Is UNITAD currently fully operational, or are the activities still partially restricted? I thank you. I thank the representative of um, Tunisia for his statement. Colleagues, uh, a short interruption. We are told there is no broadcast. Um, ask me, can you confirm that? Are we still on air? Mr. President, I believe we are. Uh, Brian, technician, has uh, confirmed. There was a very, very brief uh, interruption for about five minutes very early on. I'm advised that we are on. Okay.
Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to thank Mr. Khan for his briefing. We um, read uh, the fifth report of his investigating team very closely. Countering terrorism is a key to stabilizing the situation in Iraq. It is of principal importance to make sure that the external actors remain committed to the sovereignty of Iraq and that they coordinate their work with Baghdad. In this regard, we uh, note with appreciation the information about cooperation between the investigative team and the Iraq authorities. This cooperation is a central element of the UNITAD mandate. This uh, international mechanism was established by the Security Council in order to support the uh, domestic efforts Iraq is making to bring ISIL terrorists to account within the framework of uh, their national justice system. At the same time, we also note that so far the team has refrained from giving over to the Iraqi authorities over the evidence needed in order to conduct judicial proceedings against terrorists. At the same time, a number of other countries, according to the report, are making use of the work of the team. It is our understanding that the team is awaiting the parliament of Iraq, waiting for the parliament to approve a special law on international crime. But uh, remaining in this kind of a holding pattern is not uh, something that should negatively impact the implementation of the main part of the uh, team's mandate. Resolution 2379, I draw your attention to this, does not mandate Iraq to criminalize a given ag act. But at the same time, the resolution very clearly states that the competent Iraqi authorities are to be the main recipient of the evidence collected by the team. And we would be very interested in uh, seeing in future reports information about giving over to the local uh, justice entities of the evidence collected by the team within the framework of existing laws and uh, legal processes. We do not think that it is right to give it preference to other jurisdictions just because there is a supposed lag in the legislation of the impacted state. There is no such thing as an ideal legal system. And once again, we would like to recall how important it is to make sure that evidence is received firsthand. The team needs to make use of their own resources and the assistance from the government of Iraq. Cooperating with non-governmental organizations can only be an additional supporting tool. Relying overly on the information from NGOs can result in a distorted picture of crimes and channel the activity of a body which is created by the UN into a sphere which is of interest to a given organization or organization's sponsors. In this regard, we would be grateful if the Council could be provided with an exhaustive list of partner organizations. And I would like to end on a positive note. We did uh, note that despite uh, the difficulties resulting from COVID-19, the investigative activity by the team is, ga is gaining momentum, and we acknowledge a number of useful innovations used to collect and process evidence. And we do hope that in the very near future, this will help us uncover the true scope and nature of ISIL crime in Iraq. I thank you. I thank the representative of the Russian Federation for his uh, statement. I now give the floor to the representative of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you to Special Advisor Khan for your insightful briefing and continued efforts in Iraq. We begin by welcoming the enhanced cooperation between the new government of Iraq and UNITAD, noting that this cooperation has resulted in important agreements concerning action on key activities, including, as was mentioned, the excavation of mass grave sites, support to Iraqi authorities with respect to witness protection measures, and the implementation of UNITAD's evidence digitization project. The mutually reinforcing relationship between Iraq, the Iraqi government and UNITAD facilitates implementation of UNITAD's mandate and provides necessary support to the government of Iraq with respect for Iraq's sovereignty, territorial integrity, and political independence. We recognize the constructive engagement of UNITAD with national authorities, such as the Ministry of Justice and the Supreme Judicial Council, which has led to an agreement for the provision of support to Iraqi investigative judges pertaining to the development of case files for the prosecution of ISIL members. 
we cannot overstate how critical these confidence building and capacity building measures are to sustaining peace and enhancing stability and security in Iraq, and by extension, the wider region. A stronger Iraq can only be built from within. At the same time, we emphasize that the international community has a role to play in supporting Iraq in its reconstruction and development. We encourage the Iraqi government to take a victim-centered approach as it works to secure accountability for the crimes of ISIL and its affiliates, which have assaulted the people of Iraq. To that end, we welcome the Council of Representatives have, having formally commenced consideration of legislation to establish a legal basis for the prosecution of ISIL crimes as war crimes, crimes against humanity, and genocide. We urge authorities to build on this momentum and finalize this work. UNITAD plays a critical role in Iraq, and the Council has recognized this as evidenced by the unanimous adoption of Resolution 2544 in September. St. Vincent and the Grenadines welcomes UNITAD's steps towards discharging its mandate and its engagement with diverse parts of Iraqi society, including religious actors, survivor groups, non-governmental organizations, and community leaders. We also welcome the critical work of the Gender-Based Crimes and Crimes Against Children Unit. Witnesses play an important role in facilitating UNITAD's work, and we commend the steps that have been taken to ensure their protection. Attempts to strengthen UNITAD's trauma-informed approach to all interviews, including the role of witness protection and support units, must be commended. In closing, we emphasize that unless perpetrators are held accountable and justice secured for victims, sustainable peace in Iraq will not be possible. The primary responsibility for this rests with Iraqi authorities. However, all states and actors at international and regional levels are encouraged to support Iraq. In closing, we reaffirm our support to Special Advisor Karim Khan and his team for their dedication and express our hope for a secure, prosperous, and stable Iraq. Thank you. I uh, thank the representative of uh, St. Vincent and the Grandines for a statement. I now give the floor to uh, the representative of Indonesia. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, thank you, Special Advisor Khan, for your report and for your briefing today. Despite the challenges of the pandemic, Indonesia is reassured by your leadership and by your team's commitment and efforts to adapt and to ensure continuous implementation of the team's mandate. That said, let me make three brief points. First, on your innovative approach to the situation. We are fully aware of the situation, as well as the impact of the pandemic to the team's operational work on the ground. But we are pleased to note progress and positive developments that your team has continued to achieve. We continue to be encouraged by your innovative response, including in the field of evidence collection, especially your continued cooperation with the Iraqi national authorities. As protect, protecting the survivors and witness should always be a priority, we believe that it is also important to continue to closely engage with relevant community groups in the process of evidence collection. That leads to our second point, the capacity building initiatives. From the report, we are pleased to learn that the team has made significant development regarding cooperation in the strengthening the capacity of Iraqi judicial and executive organs. We commend UNITAD's engagement and its continued efforts to share knowledge and to, to, and to provide technical assistance and training to, it, to the Iraqi authorities. We also note with appreciation the team's partnership with NGOs, as well as its continued engagement with religious actors, survivor groups, and community leaders. And that brings me to our final point future work of the team. We would like to once again reiterate that the ability of the team to fulfill its mandate will also depend on its ability to maintain the trust 
and the support of Iraqi government and the Iraqi people. Therefore, all elements of Iraqi society must continue to be engaged. In addition, we believe that they also need to be empowered and involved in the team's activities. Today, we have witnessed significant development in the UNITAD's work. Compared to almost two years ago, when, the for, when for the first time, we engaged in the team's file at the Council. No doubt that plenty of work still needs to be done, but we believe that we are a step closer to holding to account those responsible for the atrocities. Mr. President, let us once again applaud Iraq's commitment to prosecuting the, perpet the perpetrators of those crimes and bolstering national unity among all components of Iraqi society towards preserving its unity, sovereignty, and territorial integrity. We must continue to show our support of their endeavor. Before closing, I wish to once again reiterate the commitment of Indonesia to continue to cooperate with UNITAD in support of its activities and its mandate in accordance with relevant Security Council resolution. As this will be our last intervention on this file during our current term in the Council, we want to wish Special Advisor Khan and his team the best of luck with the important and substantial tasks that lie ahead of them. Thank you. I thank the representative of Indonesia for his statement. Uh, I shall now make a statement in my capacity as the representative of South Africa. Excellencies, over the course of the two years that South Africa has served on the Security Council, we have greatly valued the opportunity of closely following the steady progress that UNITA continues to make in its task of promoting accountability for crimes committed by Daesh Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant. We would like to thank the Special Advisor and Head of UNITAD, Mr. Karim Khan, for his briefing and express our appreciation for the work that is being done by him and his dedicated multinational team of experts from various specialized fields. We also uh, would like to welcome the permanent representative of Iraq uh, to our meeting. Under, our, under your able leadership, Mr. Khan, UNITAD continues to make great strides and is to be commended for having achieved this progress in the context of the severe challenges imposed by the COVID-19 pandemic. We note that UNITAD has been forced to adjust its operations to ensure business continuity and continued delivery on its mandate. We take note of and welcome the achievements described in UNITAD's latest report, which in the earlier uh, includes the provision of training and support to Iraqi investigative judges in building cease, uh, case files for the prosecution of ISIL members for war crimes, crimes against humanity and genocide. Extensive efforts to create a digital repository of evidentiary materials, the development of the Suhut digital platform, providing a digital platform for the secure submission of relevant information by witnesses and survivors. The significant progress in formulating a common approach with the government of Iraq to the sensitive man matter of excavation of mass graves, and importantly, the accompanying expansion of the necessary psychosocial care for survivors and family members. We also welcome UNITA's renewed strategic vision focused on ensuring that the evidence it collects and preserves can ultimately be used effectively before national courts through the structuring of its workflow to deliver outputs across three mutually supportive areas of this task. Excellencies of critical importance to UNITAD's success, success has always been the close cooperative and collaborative re relationship that it has cultivated and grown with the government of Iraq in assisting Iraq to close this terrible chapter in the country's history through justice and accountability. Clearly, this partnership is also yielding an important additional be benefit for Iraq in assisting it to strengthen and modernize aspects of its criminal justice system in line with international best practices 
and with the integration of cutting edge technology. This is a valuable legacy that will contribute to strengthening the country's efforts to rebuild its institutions and structures as it seeks to open a new chapter of peace and development after much suffering. Excellency South Africa believes that the close collaborate, collaborative approach between UNITA and the government of Iraq, which has grown from strength to strength, is one that can serve as a model of best practice that may have important lessons for other similar situations. We have also been encouraged to learn of UNITA's continued efforts to build on the engagement with the Iraqi religious leaders in the framework of the interfaith statement on the victims and survivors of ISIL, as well as civil society in the establishment of the UNITA NGO Dialogue Forum. These efforts can only bolster the important gains that UNITA has made in establishing credibility in the fractured country, and we would encourage it to expand upon efforts of this nature going forward. Excellencies, South Africa believes that it is very important that the Security Council continues to support UNITA's important work, as well as that of the United Nations Assistance Mission in, in Iraq, UNAMI, as complementary and reinforcing pillars of returning Iraq to, to peace and stability. This will afford the, its people the opportunity to, to pursue prosperity with security and dignity, which is the right of all humanity. This is even more important given the various crises that the government of Iraq is presently contending with in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. And this compounded by the significant pressure of early elections taking place in 2021. It is critical that we collectively marshal our full support for Iraq and its people at this de delicate juncture, juncture of the country's history. And we welcome the role that UNITA continues to play in helping to bring healing to all of Iraq. We also commend those member states of the UN that have supported UNITA's work through financial means and otherwise. I thank you. I now resume my function as president of the council. Uh, we are supposed to uh, listen now to the permanent representative of Iraq. So if I can just check with uh, Scott whether uh, we have made contact with and reconnected them to the platform. Uh, yes, thanks, President. Uh, we understand they're connected. If they could try with audio only, if they could try to speak using the microphone to see if the council can hear, please. Representative of Iraq. All right, doesn't appear to be the case. Uh, uh, President, if you'd like to pause for a minute or to resolve technical issues, we can try. Otherwise, we will invite them to submit the statement for the compilation document and we can move on to the closed segment. That's your call. Sorry for the technical issues. Uh, we've been in touch with them, but at the moment they're not connected. So it's, it's your call. We can pause this uh, public stream or move on to the closed. Uh, if we can pause for, for just for a short while, just to give them an opportunity to reconnect, and then uh, if, if we are not successful, then uh, let's proceed, then I suggest that.